One of the biggest fears people have when looking at investing in property is how do I know if my property is going to get rented or if you already own a property, how do I make sure that the property doesn't stay vacant? So today I have with me Lauren Robertson who is a rental manager from Rental Results and we're gonna talk through this and she's going to give us some insights so you can work out whether a property is likely to be rented or if you've got a property, how to get it rented. So, hey Lauren, thanks for coming on today. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Thanks for having me. No worries. So do you want to just give us a quick rundown of, I guess, who you are and what you guys do? And then we'll jump into, you know, how we can assess this. Yeah, great. So yeah, I own Rental Results. So we're a property management specialist company. Um, We've been around now for over seven years and we manage just over 600 properties within the inner city suburb of Brisbane. So 15Ks from the CBD. I've also been doing property management for 18 years now. And um, we've won quite a few national awards. So yeah, it's a long time to be in property management, but love it. Still love the the industry. Yeah. So let's just say you've rented a lot of properties. You've seen a lot of properties (laughs) in your time. You know a lot about this space and what makes a property likely to get rented or what makes a property more likely to stay vacant. So let's start with the investors looking to purchase a property and then we'll go on to people who already own it. But let's say people are looking at a property, they're like, okay, I might want to invest in this property, but they they don't know about the market or the area. How do they know if that property is likely to be able to be rented or not? Yes. I have also written a book on this, which is rented. Um, and it's yeah, it's got a website, rented.com.au. But basically, it comes back to understanding the market. So knowing what the vacancy rates in that particular area are, understanding your property. So knowing the type of tenant that that property is likely to attract and whether there's a market for that. And then also making sure the property is priced right and presenting well. So there's a number of different factors. Yeah. So vacancy rates, that's quite easy to find. SQM have a tool that outline vacancy rates. If people go to onproperty.com.au forward slash vacancy, it'll redirect there. You can put in your suburb or postcode. It'll tell you what the vacancy rates are. What sort of vacancy rates would you assume are good versus bad? What should be avoided? Yes. I think something to bear in mind is vacancy rates, anything typically under um, 3% is good. So over 3% is deemed an oversupply in that market. Other things to consider is whether you're going to furnish the property or unfurnish. So when you're furnishing, it's it's there's benefits because obviously depreciation and um, there is definitely benefits around furnishing a property. But you do need to consider that only a smaller percentage of the market is looking for furnished as opposed to unfurnished. And also, um, it's it typically is only works in certain areas that you're going to have a high demand for furnished property. Those tenants tend to stay shorter term. So they tend to be a bit more transient than a tenant who's looking for a longer term unfurnished property. So are there specific suburbs that furnish work and suburbs that don't? Like is it yeah. inner city that furnish works because you've got, you know, people traveling for work and things like that. Whereas, yes. you know, outer suburbs not many people will want furnished. Is that exactly right? And also the current market with everything that's happened with COVID. So we don't have as many um, people coming to the city at the moment. We've also got um, less international, well, obviously international travel is not happening. (laughs) So yeah, so there are things to consider when you're furnishing or unfurnishing. We've seen a lot of furnished properties lately come off the market and they're unfurnishing them. So there's okay. a number of factors. Okay. So people are kind of moving towards that. So you mentioned the type of tenant in an area and understanding the type of tenant. Can we expand upon that and what you mean by yes. that and how to so, find out that sort of information? Yeah. Honestly, I think the best advice would be to speak to your local property manager. They're going to be able to give you advice on the type of tenant that property is going to attract, um, who's been looking for those properties, those features that that property Um, those tenants are looking for in a property. So for example, if you've got a house, typically that will appeal to a family with children or pets. And those people tend to want things like fenced yard so that the the pets or the children are safe. Um, You know, they tend to want things like dishwashers, air conditioning for comfort, and they tend to be prepared to pay more for those types of things. Um, So that's just a general idea. Do you have any examples of a property that maybe wasn't suited to the market and was difficult to rent 
as a result just so we can get an idea yeah, so I mean, obviously we've got um, like we've we've I, yeah I can think of one at the moment. So it was in a, a a suburb near the university, and the owners in particular were wanting a family, so as their ideal tenant. But that property had one bathroom, four bedrooms. The layout of the property was that the master was on one level, so downstairs, and the remaining bedrooms are upstairs. So. That Which is someone with young kids, I know when they were really little, especially it was like, okay, I want to be on the same level as them because I don't want to be yes. going up and down during the night. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's the sort of thing, like, especially with one bathroom too. So, um, you know, a family, they, you know, they may want two bathrooms or they would want all the bedrooms on one level unless the children are older then that may suit. So I think it also comes back to how the property presents. So typically external, like that is a big part of it as well. So tenants, you know, when you, you turn up to a property, if it's well cared for, well maintained, it's appealing to walk through, then that's likely to attract more tenants. It also needs to be marketed properly online. So I always recommend professional photography, 2D, 3D floor plans. We do virtual 360 degree walkthrough tours, also advertising it on like the top Um, real estate search websites and also at the top of those searches not just a standard listing um, having an online booking system so tenants can book times in that suit them being able to show it at times that are actually suitable to your prospective tenants as opposed to just you know two o'clock on a Tuesday Um, so how you mark how you market the property plays a large role in how likely that property is to be rented how quickly for how much money etc Yeah. So yeah, typically price, presentation and promotion. So knowing where the property sits in the market and making sure it's at fair market rent. Also knowing the tenant that you're likely to attract because of the property that you've got and then marketing, gearing that advertising towards that type of market. And then also making sure it presents really well online because I think sometimes properties are really, they don't do it justice because the photos are just... Some of them don't even have photos. (laughs) It's like one photo of the outside of the building and that's it yes. and you're like yeah I've got no idea what this is like yeah have, have you ever because I know a lot of people investing the first time they're getting in they're like oh my god like what if my property is never rented and remains empty I won't be able to afford this mortgage have you ever had a property that was just impossible to rent the properties will always rent. So it really does come down to your price presentation and promotion. So if it was $10 a week, you'd have a lineup of people. So $100, you know what I mean? So at some point, there's going to be a price point where there's going to be interest. We find it really interesting in some markets. Um, we've got we've had a $10 reduction. All of a sudden, we've got three or four applications. So it's just can be set, super price sensitive. And other times, you know, we've got people, you know, 15 groups turning up an inspection offering, you know, $50, $60 more a week because they want the property. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I think the big thing for people looking at getting into the market who are worried about this is like look at those vacancy rates and see what they are in an area because if you are looking, you know, outside of metropolitan areas, potentially you could have large swings in vacancy rates. And if you're in an area that's got you know, a huge vacancy rate, then maybe you can't rent your property or you're not willing to drop the price enough because of the damage and things like that, that comes with having tenants and the wear and tear. Uh, But I think like in metro markets, if you're looking at vacancy rates and you're getting under that 3% or even under 2%, as long as you've got a property that matches what people in the area want and you can talk to a rental manager, you will be fine Uh, in terms of renting that. It'll just, I guess, depend on price, how well the property presents and how well you market it. And what about, so if people own properties, rental properties, either they're having trouble renting it out as quickly as they'd like or for the price that they'd like, or how do you just rent out a property a bit faster? Yes, definitely. I'd I'd get, if your property is sitting on the market for rent, I'd probably get a second opinion from another agent in the area and just ask them what they're seeing happen. So, um, or even speak to your current agent to see, you know, are there things that you could be doing? Hopefully they're coming to you with that advice, but you maybe want to ask them other things that you could be doing in order to attract more interest. Um, 
Sometimes it can be, you know, reducing the price. It can be increasing the advertising or having a look at how it's sitting online and where it's, you know, if there's 120 properties that are comparable to yours available at the same time, then that's an oversupply in the market. So how are you going to get your property to stand out? So it might be adding incentives like one or two weeks free rent or um, there's a few little things you can do to try and make your property stand out. Um, But yeah, I think it really does come back to, you know, making sure it how it's looking online so professional photography having all your floor plans available so people you're getting qualified leads or qualified tenants showing up at the property so that they already have a really good idea of what the property looks like the layout and they're almost you know ready to apply because they've seen all of that online yeah well that's the thing with online these days now you can look through it and you can really get a feel for whether or not it suits your needs especially when there's a floor plan available and you can see orientation of the property as as well as how big the rooms are and stuff if you're getting people through who actually know yeah this likely suits me i've just got to double check it to make sure it's good then they're more likely to rent it um what sort of let's say people have an a person in there that person leaves does it generally take an extremely long period of time to rent out the property how long a vacancy is normal yeah, so again, that question probably really depends on the market in across Australia and also um, vacancy rates in that particular area. I mean, in Brisbane, we're always advertising six weeks in advance um, and the reason being is because we want to ensure that there is zero vacancy, so that's our aim. Um, so this is yeah. you'll get notice from the existing tenants that they're going to be leaving. You'll then market it before they've exited the property and then you know hopefully have someone apply and be ready to if other people move out. There might be a couple of days delay um, with the changeover and checking it, and then the new people are moving in. That's right. And really 95% of the time that's the case. So if you're getting to about two to three weeks prior and there's no interest or no applications, it's time to adjust that marketing strategy in order to attract more interest and make sure that there's no vacancy. Yeah. And what about if someone's just purchased a property, so they've de- just taken vacant possession um, obviously it depends on vacancy rates, depends on the property yeah. and everything like that. It can vary, yes. but is it, there a huge swing from, you know, sometimes it rents straight away, sometimes it takes two months or is it uh, more like? There can be. And again, I think it's making sure that the, whichever property manager you choose to work with, you're getting really good communication. So really you want to be getting an update after every inspection at least once a week as to what you need to do in terms of encouraging more interest. So if you've got a vacant property, that's costing you money. So you want a tenant in their ASAP. So really it, if it means reducing the rent by $10 a week to attract someone quicker, you're much better off because you consider the annual return versus holding in there for that, you know, say you want four twenty a week. If you get four ten and it rents today versus three weeks time, you're much better off. So. And yeah. should people look at getting a rental appraisal from someone like yourself? Let's say they're looking at purchasing an investment property. Is it worth calling someone like yourself and saying, what will this rent for? Or is that like annoying for you if they haven't no. actually settled on the property and got a contract yet? Obviously, we yeah. don't want to be wasting your time. <laughs> no, definitely. I definitely would suggest that. So I think really when you're starting to look for properties, I'd suggest connecting with a local agent. Obviously, we're more than happy to help anyone in Brisbane. Um, and yeah, making sure that you understand, okay, what's the vacancy rate like in that area? What's um, the what's the st- statistics of the demographics who are likely to rent that property? What Who's going to, who's this property going to appeal to and what do they want to see in a rental? property are there things you can do to add to that property to make the um, rent higher yeah so and that's okay right so if someone's interested in investing they can call either yourself or another rental manager depending on what area they're in and you guys are happy to at least talk them through that which could make the decision easier as to okay what exactly should I look for because let's say you're looking at a particular suburb you might say okay a lot of people in this suburb like this particular type of house or this type of unit and this is what's important to people. And so then as an investor, when you're out looking, you can be like, okay, my rental manager told me that, you know, this is important. Having an internal laundry in a unit, for example, or having, you know, fences or air conditioning in Brisbane, those sorts of things, you can start to look at those and your rental manager can become an asset to you in helping you make a good decision. 
Definitely. Like we we do this every day of the week and most of us at like our office are property investors ourselves. So I think, you know, the more information and advice you can get in that early stage when you're buying um, is really important. At least then you'd get a range as to where it sits in the market to that particular property you might be looking at. So you can do your figures and work out, okay, my home loan's this, this is how much I'm going to achieve you know, factor in your rates, your body corporate, all those sorts of things. And then you can work out, okay, this is how much I'll have at the end. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully this has really helped people out there just kind of get rid of that fear of, oh my gosh, my property is going to stay vacant. If you do a bit of due diligence beforehand, as we talked about, you don't need to do a lot, check the vacancy rates in the area, check what type of properties rent well in that area, talk to a rental manager and get their input. And they can obviously give you a better idea of, okay, how hard are properties to rent in this area as well. But, you know, if you do that before you purchase a property, you should be fine. And if you already own a property, there's a lot of different things you can do to get that property rented or increase the price of that property, which we'll talk about in a future video as well. So hopefully this encourages people, you know, I, I hate to see people go for guaranteed rental returns because they're too scared of not being able to rent a property. So this is really helpful. Thanks so much, Lauren. Where well, can people you, where can people find out more about you or if they're interested in working with you and your team if they've got properties in Brisbane? Um, yeah. Yeah. They're welcome to go to our website, so rentalresults.com.au. You can download free checklists, things like that. Also, always feel free to call or email me. So um, all of my details are on the website, but my email is lauren at rentalresults.com.au. So more than happy to help and provide any advice. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. So go ahead, check out rentalresults.com.au for those free checklists. And as well, if you want to get in contact with Lauren, she's left her email address there. So thanks so much for coming on today, Lauren. Best of luck. (laughs) Best of luck to everyone out there. And until next time, stay positive.